There are some things that every machinist should know about twist drills. They always make an oversized hole, they generally leave a rough surface finish on the sides of that hole, and the holes they make are not necessarily straight in thicker material or round in thinner material. In the case of clearance holes, these things tend not to matter, but when you need an accurately sized round hole with a good surface finish, you should reach for a reamer. Reamers are a fast and relatively inexpensive way to cut a precise diameter on a hole. They are available in almost any size. Most industrial suppliers sell them in thousandth of an inch and hundredth of a millimeter increments so you can get just the fit you need. One of the most used tools in many machine shops is an over-under reamer set, which consists of reamers one thousandth of an inch over and under each fractional size, from an eighth of an inch up to a half an inch. This lets you get either a slip fit or press fit on dowel pins. This is useful for applications where you have two mating parts that need to be able to move, but also need to stay in relation to each other, like this vice stop or these ball out molds for rounding out tubing. The most common type of reamer is called a chucking reamer. It has a very long shank in relation to the flute length. This makes sure it's flexible enough to follow the pilot hole. The flutes are most often straight, but they can also be spiral, either right-handed to pull the chips out, or left-handed to push the chips forward. Pay attention to the direction of the cut, though, because a left-handed spiral can still have a right-handed cut. Like most tooling, reamers start to get quite expensive in larger sizes, so large reamers are often sold as shell reamers. One shank is used to hold a range of interchangeable reamer shells. This not only makes the tooling more affordable, but it takes up far less space than a drawer full of very large reamers. Just like twist drills, reamers come in a wide array of styles, materials, and shank types. Many of these are the same options you would have with drills. They're available in high-speed steel and carbide, as well as carbide tipped, so you get the hardness of carbide on the leading edge and the flexibility of a high-speed steel shank. They also have both straight and taper shanks like drills, but additionally, there's a variety with a square shank like a tap. These are hand reamers and are not meant to be run under power on a machine. Instead, these are meant to be turned with a tap wrench. Hand reamers have longer flute lengths than normal, and the flutes are slightly tapered at the beginning to aid in getting the reamer straight into a hole. There are also some special purpose reamers that deserve to be mentioned. Morse taper reamers are available to either cut or clean up Morse taper sockets. Taper pin reamers are for cutting a seat for tapered dowel pins. These pins are used in all kinds of machinery to accurately locate removable parts. There are also adjustable reamers, which use opposing nuts to slide the reamer blades in tapered channels to make the reamer larger or smaller. These are always hand reamers, and the surface finish they create leaves a lot to be desired. These are mostly used to open a hole slightly rather than trying to get a precise fit. There are some rules of thumb that should be followed when reaming. The most important one is that reamers should never be run backwards, either under power or by hand. Doing so dulls the reamer. The next thing you need to know is that reamers should be run at half the speed and double the feed of a similarly sized drill. Simply put, if a drill of the same size should be run at 1400 RPM, the reamer should be run at 700. Likewise, your feed rate would be doubled, although on manual machines that comes down to a sense of feel. Next, use cutting oil when using a reamer. This not only helps achieve a better surface finish, but it affects the size of the finished hole. Reaming a hole dry tends to leave it oversized and somewhat rough looking. Lastly, if you are reaming a blind hole, make sure to stop before you reach the bottom of the hole. Reamers are flexible, but generally continue straight into a workpiece once they're started. The same cannot be said for the drill used for the pilot hole, which will start to wander sideways quickly. If you hit the bottom of a blind hole, especially a deeper one, the reamer will immediately center itself on the depression left by the drill tip and make the hole oversized. If you have to ream a blind hole, make sure to drill a little deeper with the pilot drill to give yourself more room at the bottom and utilize a quill stop to make sure you don't go too far with the reamer. 
The flutes of a reamer do not have much space in them, so the pilot hole needs to be close to size, but still leave enough material for the reamer to remove. Otherwise, it'll just rub and dull the reamer. How much stock to leave depends on the size of the reamer, so please refer to this stock allowance chart. I've also put this down in the description, and it's part of my class handout that's linked down there as well. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.